We had a major issue on the production line earlier this week, so the entire development package for this weekend has failed. Check your workstation for the details. Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm here, and welcome back to the episode of my F1 2018 career mode, episode number 28 today for the Canadian Grand Prix in season two. If you guys did miss the previous one at the Monaco Grand Prix, quite a hectic one as Monaco always is on this game, it looks like. Then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one. But we come into this one then with the failure of the major drag reduction update. So the irony is not lost on me that we waited on purpose one more episode to then, you know, purchase this upgrade so that it would come in time for the Canadian Grand Prix, you know, a place where drag reduction would be very useful but alas it has failed uh, the R&D gods have not been favorable to us and so we are actually now no longer the best car on the grid because Red Bull have been upgrading so much since the Monaco Grand Prix and even the Spanish one as well it looks like that they are now just about ahead of us there on that chart it's difficult to see because the, the the Red Bull line is very very dark blue and the background's gray but they are just about ahead of us there Ferrari and myself here at Haas we kind of level peg uh, in terms of we plateaued the same rate there from uh, Monaco to Canada here. You can see Renault, Force India make improvements. McLaren now actually go fully ahead of Mercedes by a decent chunk now going to Canada. So that's great for them. And then you can see Sauber uh, kind of plateauing with Toro Rosso with uh, the same with Williams actually there at the bottom. There. So very interesting revelations. And so Red Bull, the team that really haven't had any luck this season so far, are looking like the best team going into Canada maybe. So at a track where they've had some decent luck in the past, Red Bull have. Remember Dan Ricciardo back to 2014 really. So Let's see how it goes then for qualifying. Let's see if we're going to really be missing that drag update by the time we get through to Q3, hopefully. Let's hit it into qualifying. Welcome again, then, and we hope you're ready for another fantastic session as the teams prepare to unleash their cars for qualifying at the Canadian Grand Prix. When it comes to getting lap time out of this circuit, it's traditionally been about maximising top speed. Do you simply remove as much downforce as possible, hang on into the corners and max out down the straights? The teams will have arrived with all manner of parts designed to capitalise on the long straights. The cars will be that much harder to drive in the corners, but everyone will be in the same boat. Right, so Q1 here in Canada should be hopefully a formality. Obviously a favourite circuit of mine to go pretty well around here around Mon Montreal. So we're going to qualify on the ultra-soft tyres, the middle compound of tyre, when you have one set available in qualifying. So we'll burn them up here in Q1 and leave us open for a bit of hypersoft action in Q2 and Q3. The race should be all dry. Obviously last season we had a wet race uh, the entire time pretty much, so we didn't really see what the tyre strategy would have been like in dry conditions, but at the moment I'm just going to go for pure speed, because you can see there, uh, Dan Ricciardo topping Q1. We just about get through into Q2 by the skin of our teeth, but the Ferrari looking strong as well, uh, but just mainly the, uh, the Red Bulls, especially in practice as well, they're looking very, very strong, so I imagine it's maybe going to be a tougher time maybe to get to the front order of the grid. We've been very familiar with the second uh, kind of row of the grid so far this season but uh, now the Red Bulls are kind of joining the party along with the usual suspects of Hamilton and Vettel maybe it might be a little bit more tricky but we're in Q2 then across the line those hypersoft and we do go up into P5 and that'll be a Magnus and you can see struggles a little bit and just about gets into the top 10 there obviously there's a bit of a gap then from Magnus into Science, but still to see him down in P10 behind Fernando Alonso uh, Hulkenberg in the Renault that was a little bit odd so hopefully Magnus can pick up some pace around uh, Canada in Q3 here as we're into that session now. A little bit deep and wide into that first kind of chicane or second chicane I should say at the end of sector one but we find back some time as we go through the hairpin then towards the end of the lap then through the last chicane. Chuck it in there as fast as we can over the curbs and an open DRS. Graze the wall of champions there on the right only but don't ever hit it and we're across the line. It's going to be P3 at the moment there. And uh, so I was ready to actually go for a second lap then. I was fast forwarding through to see when my teammate Magnuson was going to go out then. And then I'll just go out quickly uh, after him. But I uh, sped up a little bit too much there. And I got the session time warning. So actually I shot myself in the foot a little bit. I didn't have a second run then. But still we end up in P3. We don't go any further down the order. Sebastian Vettel, to my surprise, gets pole position. Ricardo is the one in second place though. And you can see Verstappen uh, a little bit off his teammate. But uh, Ricardo showing the improved Red Bull uh, package this weekend with a P3 though ahead of Hamilton so I'm pretty happy but again Magnussen I was kind of weirded out to see him in P7 I thought he would have done a lot better after you know clearly where our car is in the last couple of episodes so, uh, so maybe a case like we had in Australia and Bahrain hopefully maybe our car or at least Magnussen's car is going to show a bit more pace in the race maybe and then before we go into the race actually I had to choose a rival I forgot to do that so I debated what rival I'd choose but in the end really the logical rival for us is Sebastian Vettel even though it's going to be a tough order to beat Vettel
Vettel maybe because he is probably the best uh, you know driver out of the ones we could pick in terms of the cars there for him. But he's also had some bad luck here and there, so we could also beat him in that respect. So I thought we'd go for him. The maximum respect we can earn there uh, out of this election. So nice and difficult, and definitely gonna be a bit of a challenge maybe. But let's go to the race. Then I'm looking forward to going around Canada in the dry uh, in a race because last time we had a bit of a you know bit, it was an interesting one, but it was also a little bit dull in the wet conditions. Looking forward to a dry running here around Montreal. We're back once again beside the St. Lawrence River here in Montreal for the Canadian Grand Prix. The event first moved to a variant of this track back in 1978. It was won by none other than Gilles Villeneuve, the first Canadian to ever win his home race and in whose honour the circuit would be renamed. With top speeds of around 210 miles per hour heading into the overtaking opportunity of turn 13, the 2.7 miles of the circuit Gilles Villeneuve are some of the quickest on the Formula One calendar. There are 14 corners in total, with 60% of the lap taken at full throttle, and average lap speeds clock in at about 130 miles per hour. Anthony Davidson joins me again for the race today. Now I want to ask you about Sergei Sorotkin. That was a great win in the last race. Can they keep that momentum going this weekend? It's always nice to come into a Grand Prix weekend on a high, but your expectations are based much more on your practice and qualifying runs. So it's the momentum from those sessions that they'll be hoping to carry into the race today. Well then, after an exciting qualifying session yesterday, let's take a look at how the cars line up. Sebastian Vettel has a clear track ahead of him today. He starts in pole position, with Daniel Ricciardo slotting in alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have the engineer, Raikkonen, Max Verstappen and Magnussen, Alonso, Bottas, Hülkenberg and Carlos Sainz, Perez, Van Dorn, Esteban Ocon and Hamilton. They've taken a grid penalty. Leclerc, Gasly, Marcus Ericsson and Lance Stroll, Sirotkin and Brendan Hartley rounds off the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. No penalties then for Sebastian Vettel and Ricardo, so we do line up here in P3, just behind the German, directly uh, there in our third grid slot. And the race strategy today looks like to be a two-stop. Uh, strangely enough, though, the default is using all three compounds, which I feel like we can get away with uh, not using the super softs. Uh, I think we stretch the hyper softs. Uh, you're literally like one or two laps, and then the ultra is one or two laps. We can go uh, hyper to ultra, ultra. And the thing is, uh, from qualifying, clearly, I think we have the pace now to do a two-stop around here around Canada. I think a one stop's possible if you go maybe ultra to soft uh, super soft tires or if you really were careful enough maybe hypers to super softs but I genuinely think we have the pace today to try and you know play with the big boys a little bit on the actual two stop strategy and I'm looking forward to it obviously the only two cars ahead of us are a Ferrari and Red Bull car so licking my lips and seeing hopefully we can have a good one obviously last season was an interesting one trying to keep ahead of a Red Bull the entire race let's see if we can try and overtake a Red Bull in dry conditions here around Montreal as uh, we're going to go towards five red lights then for a round number eight of season two here at Canada one of my favorite races on the calendar here we go to five red lights and we're underway here in Montreal to fantastic start there from the Red Bull car Ricardo has bolted up into first place Vettel has had his pants pulled down into turn one off pole position Ricardo the elbows out in turn two and he's ahead in the lead the Canadian Grand Prix goes to Australian Vettel flustered there and he's down to P2 we're gonna have a little look but ultimately have to stick behind you're gonna have to wait until maybe later to the end of lap one to see what we can do but the Red Bull car on paper now going to this weekend the fastest car on the grid and so Ricardo's showing that he may have not got the lap together in Q3 and so he's determined to take the lead it looked like off that start because he literally bolted it was like almost he jumped the start almost for like a millisecond and so into uh, the end of lap one onto lap two is still right behind Vettel that's good to see and getting away from crucially Max Verstappen there in the second Red Bull in P4 behind us he's just ahead of Kimi Raikkonen and then I believe I think it's Kevin Magnussen just behind the Iceman but we're closing up on Vettel then as we go on towards lap three in the middle part of the lap towards the hairpin trying to obviously get the brake zone as best we can and close up in this final brake zone before we get to the DRS straight which is activated on this lap so here we go we've got a bit of ERS there half a bar left up into high and then overtake mode in rich mix as well and then the DRS will come around about now and we'll open the flap and here we go gaining gaining and we actually rapidly gain on Vettel there so the Haas Ferrari overtakes the works Ferrari and a bit of upset there and so we're P2 and now can we try and look ahead of us rather than the behind Let's see. But at the moment, it's Ricardo for myself, then Vettel. And I think at the moment, behind is still Verstappen keeping Raikkonen at bay. But I think it's pretty damn close between those guys. We look on then. So there goes Verstappen. Actually, Verstappen's a lot closer 
now, to Vettel. Uh, then I thought, actually, so it looks like that through that final chicane, maybe. Uh, Verstappen and Raikkonen were really closing up. Then it's Magnussen a bit further back, just ahead of Fernando Alonso, doing a good job in that upgrade to McLaren, ahead of the first Mercedes car of Valtteri Bottas. It actually takes, like, three, four, five, six cars to actually look at where Lewis Hamilton is. He's way down the order, outside the top ten, I think that is, just behind Stoffel Van Dorn. So the Mercedes cars, who are yet to upgrade this entire season, are really in no man's land at the moment here at Montreal. But now, look at this. Vettel trying to make a Rio taking pass for P2. Round the outside he goes. We give him the room of the exit there, but we just managed to have the better racing line. Of course, that's the kind of tighter line as we get to that second part of that chicane. And so now look at that. Verstappen, uh, aggressive as always, round the outside of not only uh, Vettel, but also me there for a second. And now it's the two Ferrari cars that will go side by side. So it's all kicking off. I'm hoping, to be honest, that I can get away from this entire pack there and try and chase after Ricardo because you can see just in the distance there, Ricardo is kind of uh, waltzing away from us as we continue to fight. And it's three wide into the last chicane, the two Ferraris and Verstappen's Red Bull car. And it's actually, I think that's, I think, is, is that Vettel that's come off better? I think it has. But Raikkonen is still not giving up there. The Iceman really wants this position from his teammates. So the two Ferraris still go at it. And then look at that, my teammate in the background, Magnussen, round the outside of Verstappen, trying to get him. Uh, it doesn't make it work, though, has to stick behind the Dutchman. But the Ferrari cars still at it there. And I'm not complaining, because along with the really great battle we're seeing at the moment here in this video, it's also helping me out to try and getting away from this pack and kind of getting on to maybe hopefully eventually the DRS uh, zone of Dan Ricardo, of course, because these guys were getting a bit of a toe from me. But now that we've broken that one second uh, kind of delta time now, these two are now fighting off each other for their own kind of DRS uh, kind of uh, uh, aid as uh, Verstappen now goes around the outside of one of the Ferraris. And it's a big lock up there from Vettel. Vettel is struggling now in this race. Looks like, I don't know, maybe got uh, a bit of contact with Raikkonen and has been put off a little bit because a big lock up there. Now Raikkonen already within one corner. Looks like he's already trying to get away from Vettel and Verstappen looks like he's very eager to get past the German. Meanwhile, Magnussen, Alonso and Bottas are also climbing up. So it's a one, two, three, four, five, six train there and it might be seven soon enough because I think there's another car in the background. I think of uh, one of the Force India cars also not too far behind. So Raikkonen from Vettel, Verstappen, Magnussen is the order there as we've got yellow flags for Leclerc, I think that is. That's out of the Grand Prix, unfortunately, for the young man in the Sauber. But on lap six now, we're going to be coming in for our first pit, uh, first pit stop then. So the Hypersoft's obviously not going very long uh, in terms of tyre wear. I mean, uh, Canada's a very low tyre wear circuit usually, but the Hypers definitely didn't hold on for too long. But we did stretch them, crucially, one more lap than the default was. So we stretch the Ultras now for maybe one or two laps, and we can definitely do Ultra Ultra. I still think, due to it being a default strategy, I think a lot of the AI, and crucially Daniel Ricciardo, he might try Super Softs at the end, which means we'll have an advantage at the end of this Grand Prix. But let's see where we filter out right now in terms of traffic. Hopefully not too much. We come out behind a train that's tail ended by S-Man Ocon. I believe uh, Ricardo came in on lap five. So he got a one lap undercut and he's actually ahead of this train. But to be fair, that's what the original gap was anyway. So it's not like I've lost time for Ricardo uh, with uh, going one lap longer on Hypers. He already had that gap anyway. And so here we go now around the outside of Ocon. And meanwhile, it's Hamilton v Van Dorn. Uh, these two still scrapping away from the start of the Grand Prix. Uh, Van Dorn on the Hypersoft tyres and Hamilton uh, on Ultras. So I don't know uh, if Hamilton started those tyres. I can't actually remember if he actually got into Q3 or not. He, I'm pretty sure he did. So I don't know what's actually gone on there. But we go around the outside of Hamilton. We're still neck and neck because Hamilton keeps his foot in there. Fair play. On the outside of the first chicane, we just about managed to squeeze through. And eventually, if Hamilton kept his foot in there, that time we would have slammed into the wall. And as we move on, we're going to overtake this second pink car of the afternoon afternoon in the form of Sergio Perez. We go down the inside. It will be an up ahead. We can just about see then Ricardo chasing after Carlo Sainz. He'll probably dispatch him pretty quickly. And then it will just be Ricardo P1 and me P2 on the road. Obviously, once we overtake Sainz ourselves. So you can see here for really the first time, I think, uh, in this career mode, I think I have the actual legit pace uh, you know, here out and out to actually do a two stop versus having to do the one stop to try and compete with the top guys. I'm actually, I've actually got the pace to kind of make up the time, even through traffic here, uh, as is the pace of the car now. And obviously, you know, as I've said, I'm very, very comfortable. One of my favorite tracks to race at around Canada. So you know, I just always find a really nice flow to it. So uh, now it's just Ricardo v me, one and two at the moment. And, you know, the Ferraris and the rest of them are quite far back then having their own battle. So let's just see how we go through this Grand Prix, giving you a bit of a rundown through the order as we try and continue to chase after Ricardo, so P3 is still Carlos Sainz, I believe Sainz and also these two Force Indies are trying one stops, uh, 
this race. So Sainz in P3 for now, Perez P4, then you've got Raikkonen who's just overtaken Ocon, then you've got the Williams who definitely is clearly trying a one-stop as well. Then Magnussen ahead of Sebastian Vettel here. So Magnussen's done well to keep ahead of the German. So I think he actually, he, I think he was behind Vettel uh, when we last saw him. So he must have jumped him then, maybe in the pit stop phases or just overtook him when he missed the overtake. Behind them then is the Toro Rosso and then you've got the first Mercedes car. So Merck really struggling and actually talking about struggling now, Verstappen is behind the second Toro Rosso. So Verstappen from starting in, you know, what was P4 looking quite aggressive here. He's really lost out and speaking about losing out is then the two McLarens because Alonso was way up there just behind Magnussen at one point in this race but now two, both McLarens are way down the order you know, towards the second half of the, of the grid. I don't know what, to, what, what on earth happened. I don't know if they got stuck in traffic or something like that but they're both, uh, you know, really going to be uh, annoyed with themselves where, where they are in this race uh, considering their upgrades for this weekend and now we can see Sebastian Vettel making a move on Magnussen then so I was really happy to see uh, Magnussen ahead of Vettel for now but looks like Vettel has other ideas he's locks up though but he's still trying to fight it on the outside of turn two and good to see Magnussen is getting the elbows out there and is giving him a good fight there always love to see a bit of an upset on the establishment there the Haas Ferrari uh, beating and uh, a little bit faster a bit punchier it looks like at the moment in this race ahead of the works Ferrari car but maybe not for too long because eventually you'd like to think at some point maybe the Ferrari will have the guts to, to make some sort of move that'll work out but uh, Vettel's definitely had some brake issues this race you know two lock ups so far in this Grand Prix but eventually I think he will get that through the, the uh, first sequence of corners and again trying it in the same place but this time I think he'll have the traction to go right on the outside it will turn to the inside then the next left hander but to be fair Magnussen still got it on the outside and Vettel with another lock up there so I really think maybe the German has some brake issues maybe in this race reliability issues maybe for the Ferrari for the first time this season and Magnussen stays ahead of Vettel then so we've had Red Bull obviously and Mercedes with reliability we haven't really seen uh, Ferrari with any kind of issue so maybe this is the start of them having some issues but now we move back to our POV now it's taken us five laps to really catch up to Ricard and for the first time now this race we look likely to maybe make an overtaking move we couldn't quite do it before the chicane Ricardo blocks us off quite well there but now into turn one here we go to the left hand side a little bit of a late move there and it's so so close into the apex of turn one we're trying to still find a way around the outside but ultimately we just scrub off way too much speed trying to rotate the car around the outside so Ricardo, to be fair to him did some really great defense Defensive work there, part of the car where he needed to in the last chicane in turn one, and ultimately we ought to lose some uh, momentum there into that first chicane with some dirty air. So you're going to have to wait until later. And now a second chance on the back straight this time, though. We're going to wait a little bit more patiently into the last chicane and maybe try and size ourselves up a little bit better. You can see a much better turn in for us compared to last time when we tried the move. And now we can throw the car off faster. Open DRS. We'll go to the left hand side, and Ricardo will uh, squeeze us a little bit towards the wall, but not too much down the inside. We go now again, second time, man we do get it this time. Just about managed to slow the car down before we put it in the grass there on the uh, right hand side of the track and we're up into P1 in the lead of the Canadian Grand Prix on lap 18. We've got plenty of this race to go in the moment. You can see we're also down a little bit on the fuel as well. So we need to watch out for that because obviously long back straights are very, very easy to burn the fuel. So we need to watch out for that. But as uh, Ricardo comes in then uh, one lap earlier than us, we're going to continue on for a little bit longer. Remember, Ricardo, like I said, is probably maybe coming in on super softs. Magnussen comes in, Vettel as well. So I'll be uh, interested to see what they go on. But Ricardo has already made his pit stop then by the time Magnussen and Vettel come in. And look at that. Yep, Ricardo is on super super softs then so the reason why he's coming early is because obviously clearly he's getting a lot more tired than I am and he's having to go on to the hardest compound of tire now to go to the end of the Grand Prix whereas I'm going to go two laps longer he might well you know get a bit of an undercar here but we'll have the advantage on the faster tire and now unfortunately as we go back to look at Magnussen he's been overtaken and jumped by Vettel in the pit stops the Ferrari pit crew uh, you know the Ferrari team on track may not be uh, as good as they used to versus the Haas but in the pit lane there the Ferrari crew uh, managed to jump Vettel ahead of Magnussen so Magnussen's going to have to go and do some re-overtaking there to get ahead of Vettel once more but on that 21 now so I think this has been two laps since uh, uh, Ricardo made his piss off we're going to come in eventually now so we've got uh, what's that 14 laps to go or 13 laps to go I can't do the quick maths clearly but we're going to be in and for a set of ultra soft tyres I believe Magnussen also there I, I didn't point that out Magnussen also went on ultras so it looks like our car in general obviously we've got some good 
tire wear. We've done a few little updates on the tire wear on the chassis side and the R&D tree. Uh, so compared to the AI, uh, the rest of the AI grid, uh, we're looking a bit more kind of light on our toes. But there goes Ricardo. I think that was his Red Bull car. Yep, there we go. So we're out in P P2, uh, you know, just categorically. So we're already past any traffic. So it really is just now a straight fight between me and Ricardo to the end of this Grand Prix. No traffic to contend with in between us. Obviously, there might be some blue flags here and there that might help us out. But it is just about now chasing after Ricardo. But like I said, we have the tire advantage. So let's hopefully use that to good effect. And hopefully, slowly but surely, we will close back up on the Australian who for now has a bit of a, a bit of a gap of about two seconds there. And then in P3 is the Force India doing a one stop but not for too long as Raikkonen's going to go on the outside to the inside then for the next part and shove the Force India off the racing line and uh, close behind then is the Renault and the other Force India. All those guys doing one stops instead of the Ferrari guys so also definitely something that uh, Magnussen and Vettel are going to have to contend with is overtaking these guys and actually speaking of that, what great timing that is. Magnussen trying a move around the outside then of Vettel there into the hairpin. Lovely timing to cut back to, uh, cut back to that on the replay camera and Magnussen is back ahead of Sebastian Vettel with DRS there of course got jumped in the pit lane so good to see on merit Magnussen's back out ahead and still Raikkonen is actually starting to fight the Force India there and you've got the second one trying to overtake the Renault of Carlos Sainz and then you've got Perez coming back at Raikkonen Ocon on Sainz there so a lovely two by two by two there and uh, Perez giving a, a bigger fight to the Ferrari than I ever thought a uh, Force India car would because really Force India and Renault even have been you know way down the order in the midfield uh, quite a big goal uh, in the performance chart but uh, I guess obviously Canada being Canada long back straight so the Force India is able to use the Mercedes power to good use and uh, to be fair to the Renault so for some reasons found some pace there in the, in the form of Carlos Sainz and is holding on quite well in between the two Force Indies we can see them fighting as uh, invited Magnus and the Vettel to close out quite rapidly so we'll cut back later onto that fight and see what goes on but we're back to our development then on that 26 with the straight line speed overtake mode on the ERS trying it on the left hand side then Ricardo will go defensive as uh, probably uh, we assume he would but it is going to mean we're going to straighten up again and try this move on the left hand side maybe Ricardo is going to pinch us though so we can't go on the left we're going to have to dodge to the right hand side then but Ricardo again parks the car really well we try it to the inside then ultimately it doesn't work out a bit of contact is made and Ricardo comes off the, the better in first place there. So, yeah, a little bit of uh, frosty contact there. But to be fair, Ricardo was squeezing me quite hard. And then into turn two, just got to overcook there. So, my bad. But, I mean, Ricardo keeps the position. But, yeah, Ricardo so far, his AI, to be fair, like I said, has done a really great job so far. You know, the way he parked his car right in the middle to turn one there didn't give me the room on the left or the right and he's kept the position for now so we have to try something different maybe and try and overtake him before maybe into the chicane we haven't done that yet so far uh, quite surprisingly he's been very good on the brakes into that final chicane which is usually a place where I can make a pass or two on the AI meanwhile we've got the uh, Force India V the Renault and Magnussen is right behind there uh, closely followed by Sebastian Vettel who's kind of uh, getting a kind of a, a little bit away from that pack and then behind them is the other Force India ahead of the Red Bull. So they've already dispatched of Ocon then. So I'm assuming this is uh, Perez Sainz uh, ahead of Magnussen. So can Magnussen overtake the Renault then into the next chicane with DRS here down this back straight on the outside then like Kimi Raikkonen did earlier on. Magnussen's going to have to get the elbows out a little bit on the exit because he only had uh, half a car length alongside but he's got it and he is ahead of the Spaniard then. So like I said uh, in qualifying, hopefully the hope was that Magnussen's uh, race car is a lot better than his qualifying car was because he definitely surprised me of uh, you know the lack of pace he had in Q3 so I was kind of hoping that this would kind of happen so he's uh, at least going to get maybe get into P4 then I think Raikkonen up ahead in P3 might be a bit too much of an ass there but at least he'll get P4 in this race he goes on the inside then of the Force India to the second part of the chicane and he's through and uh, hopefully he'll keep that position then Vettel might give him a bit of a challenge maybe the end but uh, Vettel starts to get through that Force India then but up ahead like I said is Raikkonen looking pretty comfortable in P three and then still we march on trying to chase down Daniel Ricciardo this fight is literally going on for most of the entire Grand Prix really you know ever since lap four since I got into P2 we've been just chasing and chasing Ricciardo but now's the time for one last chance onto the last lap of the Grand Prix and we have to make it count DRS open ERS flowing rich mix there as well in the car on the left hand side Ricciardo will obviously defend the last chicane but onto the last lap of the Grand Prix here we go straight up the car a lot faster Ricciardo is going to squeeze us very much so towards the Grand and the wall but we still kept our foot in there did not hesitate into turn one Ricardo has the advantage where he swings
same round on the outside. This time round, we don't scrub off too much speed. We get the cut back line. Ricardo's been compromised. We're going to try another move to the inside then of the first chicane. Ricardo will let off and give us the room on the outside then. It's so slow through that chicane to the point where Raikkonen is gaining so much time there in P3. Just watch the minimap go. Is Ricardo now tries to dive around the outside then. Very unorthodox place to make a dive, but he's made it work. We're in high mode now, trying to get back. We're going to push him a little bit towards the right hand side. Pay back the favour he did to us on the pit scrape. Banging tyres there. It's really getting quite, quite frosty here. Right now at the moment, it's the last lap. It all counts. This is for the race win. And you can see the sparks are flying as we're giving everything. We're in P2 though. And Ricardo, crucially, is still in P1. A final, final hairpin. And the final straight. A last chance to make this happen. And Raikkonen is also there to make things more awkward for us. But here we go. Rich mix. Overtake mode on ERS. DRS open. And on towards the last chicane for the final time here. And again, we're going to try the move on the left-hand side. It's going to force Ricardo a defensive move into the chicane. He's going to compromise his line. We're going to be tightening up a lot faster. And there we go. There is the traction. We need DRS open. And we are ahead of Ricardo. And across the line, we'll take P1. And Ricardo will only just keep P2. And that is the win at the Canadian Grand Prix on the last up of the Grand Prix in the last straight, in the last minute. And I'll have it no other way. Superb driving. That's the race win. A great win then for the Haas team today. Anthony, what do you think made the difference here? I think a large part of the result comes down to temperament. They were able to keep their heads when everyone around them was losing theirs. And that's allowed them to get the best out of the car, to maximise the strategy and to stay out of trouble. Our drivers are making their way out for the podium celebrations. And it's going to be Haas picking up the winner's trophy. Congratulations to the entire team for coming out on top in that amazing Grand Prix. That was an absolute sweat fest of a Grand Prix to get that race victory, but it makes it seem so much sweeter than against Dan Ricciardo. Raikkonen on the podium, so, so close. Magnussen P4, really good uh, day in the office then for the Haas team. You know, Magnussen, yeah, didn't get the podium, but still, we outscored the Ferrari and the Mercedes quite a decent amount there. And you can see in the championship, drivers-wise, obviously, we uh, pull a bit of a gap to Kevin Magnussen. Vettel will get back, back once ahead of Lewis Hamilton after Hamilton. And I think even Bottas had a no-point-scoring position there, or I think at least Hamilton was out the point so a very bad race for then uh, for the reigning world champion from season one you can see the constructors Ferrari fell ahead and you can see Red Bull there after floundering down in what was P7 I think it was straight away they're back up into P4 literally one good result for Red Bull and uh, much to the midfield's annoyance they get back up into P4 and a familiar sight in the constructors there but they're not too far ahead of McLaren so they have to watch out if McLaren can pull up some upgrades and they'll challenge them for sure and you can see Williams just about staying ahead of Sauber who fall behind Force India unfortunately because again like Red Bull forcing to get one good re result like that compared to Sauber's plugging away over the uh, course of the first six races and they just get that so that's just the way uh, the cookie crumbles sometimes in F1 you know you can chip away and then one your rival team can just get one good result and blow it out of the water for you but that's just the way it goes but we're going to go into the interview then after the race and then uh, round, the, round out the episode. Amazing performance out there you must be really happy. How are you feeling after that win? Obviously feeling amazing. I kind of feel like, uh, you know, giving props to the engine department. Obviously, we clearly had an advantage in a straight line against the Red Bull car. And I think ultimately that's what helped us there. You know, the traction zone out the chicane was monster. So I'm going to kind of compliment them. Things are looking up after last week, aren't they? Obviously, last week, you know, last episode of the Monaco Grand Prix wasn't great for us. Um, obviously, it wasn't really due to the car, though, but I'm going to still compliment the engine department. Again, try and get maybe double boost morale there for the engine uh, clan over there in, de in the department. Your team must be ecstatic with how you're performing. Could have gone kind of either way here with this answer, but I'm going to say I'm really glad I'm going to meet the team objectives. Obviously, the team probably disappointed after Monaco. They were. We saw the team rep go down, so hopefully this will kind of bring me back in good faith with them. Another podium. You must be getting used to it up there. And that last answer was sportsmanship, so I'm going to go tongue-in-cheek here, go a bit egotistical and just say I'll keep you guessing by maybe not uh, winning and uh, getting uh, losing on purpose just to keep everyone on their toes there. So that's going to bring Great. us back. Well, that's everything. 
So it's been interesting so far, you know, in season one, a lot of my answers were very showmanship, but by, by no means on purpose, a lot of the answers I've been choosing lately have been very sportsmanship-like, so that's kind of surprising to me. Uh, so we've got a bit of showmanship right at the end there, but you can see the team rep goes way, way up, and the moment we are beating still Magnuson, and we get off to a good footing, beating Vettel in the first time, first outing as our rivalry. Of course, we've got that drag reduction update, major one, that's now coming for the French Grand Prix, not it was going to come here, but now it's going to be next episode at France at Paul Ricard, but I feel like doing one more upgrade great and in the end after debating a little bit in my head what to do I end up wanting to choose the rear downforce upgrade there it just means we can potentially run a lower rear wing on the setup because there's more pure downforce on the base of the car on the rear so that's going to be a minor upgrade so that'll be two upgrades then coming for France so uh, what was going to be probably a maybe a no upgrade race for us at France now turns into having a major uh, drag reduction update and also a minor uh, rear downforce one so you can see the blue little line there on the right hand side quite a big chunk there and so uh, uh, unless Red Bull also have a major upgrade, that should bring us back on uh, on top as the best car on paper there on the performance chart uh, at Paul Ricard. But guys, if you did enjoy that episode, uh, a really, really fantastic and sweaty Grand Prix that was here at Canada and a fantastic, crazy last lap then and smash lap on, guys. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around to get subscribed for weekly formal content, I've been over. Home just today. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.